556 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. It's our fourth and final Life for Six Alert Day as we still track some impacts from Debbie. We have the heavy rain that's still leading to flooding concerns. And on top of that, we also have some strong storms bringing gusty winds. I'll break down all the details straight ahead. Now on News Channel 6 at 6, cleaning up the damage from Debbie. What Scriven County is doing now to avoid further flooding as your news at 6 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 6. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brad Mead. And I'm Jenny Montgomery. We begin our coverage tonight, as we have all week, with an update on what Tropical Storm Debbie is doing. And tonight, we can tell you that it is cleaning up the remnants left behind. Yeah, thank goodness we have gotten to that stage. Hope all goes well going forward as we check in with our chief meteorologist, Jenna Petracci. Well, right now on Live Viper 6, we are seeing some scattered shower and storm activity. And of course, this is not exactly what we want to be happening right now, especially in those counties that are already dealing with ongoing flooding. We're talking 12 to 14 inches of rain in some of our Southern Line County. So even an additional half an inch could lead to more problems. And on top of that, we have the thunder, the lightning, and some gusty winds. So we did have a special weather statement earlier that has now been dropped. So that's good news. That's for Hancock and Washington County. But what we are left with is the flooding concerns. We have an aerial flood advisory for parts of Barnwell, Columbia, Richmond, McDuffie, and Burke counties. Fortunately, not much rain here, though, just some scattered shower activity outside of Hepzibah and Waynesboro. Then as we go over towards the west, this is where the heavy rain is coming down. There's Sparta, there's Sandersville, all of this activity off towards the northwest with frequent lightning, 33 strikes over the last five minutes. Then as we go down towards the southeast, scattered showers in Barnwell as well. Denmark, Bamberg, Earhart, and also over into Allendale, we have those scattered showers. And that's where we have the flash flood warnings continuing for Jenkins, Screven, and Allendale until 9 o'clock this evening. Debbie right now is fortunately downgraded to a tropical depression as of the 5 o'clock advisory. That means winds are at 35 miles per hour. And the best part of this is that it's finally picking up some forward speed going at 10 miles per hour compared to the three that we had yesterday. So it's finally starting to move out of here. Our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam showing a stormy view, some lake showers coming down now at Augusta Regional Airport. We did have a wind gust at Augusta Regional Airport all the way up to 39 miles per hour earlier today. And you can see even a 40 mile per hour wind gust in Aiken. Right now those winds are still gusting, especially in our South Carolina counties, 35 in Aiken, 22 in Barnwell and 16 out towards the west in Sandersville. Temperature wise, we have a big variety, upper 70s up towards the northeast and low 90s down towards the southwest. Now as we go into tomorrow, a lot of us will be back to the hot and humid conditions, low 90s, humidity back on the rise, but we will also still have the chance of rain. I will break down all those details with a look at the future cast coming up. Back to you. All right, Jenna, thank you so much. And one of those areas we have been watching so closely is in Scriven County. It's the Lake Eureka Dam and the threat that that dam could breach. News Channel 6 is Bria Smith covering what's going on in Newington as they make efforts to get things back up and running. What a week for our friends there, Bria. That's right, Brad. Well, crews have been out here all day, and they're making repairs to damages that have been left behind by Debbie, and that's including Eureka Dam and... Yeah, I think we have like 15 inches of rain. There's no doubt Debbie's presence in Screven County brought inches of rain in the double digits. Don't worry about it, man, because it, it dumps so much rain. Even my front yard's got a pond in it, and it usually goes, after it stops raining like this, it usually goes right away. But there's no, it, it's so wet, so saturated, it can't do nothing. And while the sun has assumed the skies in Newington, it's the damages left behind that has had crews out all day. Scranton County Fireman Ian May says Eureka Road isn't the only one they're making repairs to. Over 100 damaged roads have been accounted for and will be fixed in time. As long as they can stay on it, you know, I know that's what they want to do. I mean, everything takes time to get done, but I'm sure everybody around here would appreciate it, you know, especially Sylvania and stuff like that, you know, I'm sure of it. 
EMS also tells us school is expected to resume Monday, August 12th if things continue to improve. The school board meeting will be held Friday to discuss road schedules. Praise the Lord that he didn't get no more than what we got. I know we're supposed to get a little more rain anyway, so. And EMS says it's important to follow the roadway instructions on their website for your own safety. Reporting live in Newington, Bria Smith, WJBS, News Channel 6. And Debbie is partly to blame for an Aiken County road washing away. Cedar Creek Road is closed near the town of Wagner between Coleman Bridge and Kennedy Pond Roads. That's the same part of the road that washed out a couple of weeks ago. A spokesperson for the sheriff's office saying Debbie has created even more of a problem. No word on when it might reopen. The Bamberg County government is warning people living along the Edisto River about flooding. Thanks to the rainfall from Debbie, there's a significant risk for flooding in the area for the next few days. County leaders say they expect the river to continue to rise throughout the weekend. If waters continue to rise to dangerous levels, you should evacuate immediately. A new Columbia County Elementary School will not be ready for students next week. Hannah Latier is live there now. Hannah. at the Columbia County Performing Arts Center Monday through at least Thursday. School operations at the Performing Arts Center will be the same as they were this week. The new building's contractor says the final inspection could happen early next week, but there is no definite move-in date thanks to the weather we've been having. Parents we spoke to are pleasantly surprised with Westmont's temporary home, saying everything is organized, safe and secure, and the kids are enjoying it. That covers their main worries, but they still wish they were more in the loop. Like Richmond County, they could have let us know a month and a half, a month before, even two weeks before for us to better plan everything. My concern before was their safety and how it was going to work out, but seeing it now, seeing it this week, I'm, I don't really have that many worries. It'll take as long as it takes, and the kids are having fun, they're safe, so that works out. Now, I mentioned that this plan calls for students to be at the Performing Arts Center through Thursday the 15th, but what happens after that is still up in the air. Now, I did reach out to the school board, and they said all the information that they have was already sent out to parents, but as they gather more information, they will send that out as well. Live in Martinez, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. All right, Hannah, we appreciate it. A Columbia County man is behind bars on child pornography charges. Columbia County deputies entered Stephen Yanizeski's home with a warrant and found two laptops that were actively sharing child pornography. The 28-year-old is being held without bond. One person is dead after a crash in Richmond County. It happened around 6.30 this morning on I-520 at mile marker 12. 40-year-old Joseph Wilson of Hepzibah was taken to the hospital where he died. There is going to be an autopsy. An arrest has been made in a deadly hit and run in Barnwell County. 19-year-old Samantha Cannon is charged in the death of 69-year-old Charles Brabham. It happened last Saturday on South Carolina Highway 64. Investigators say Brabham's body was found after being hit by an unknown vehicle that fled the scene. Deputies were flagged down by a man who identified Cannon as his daughter and said she was the driver of that unknown car. Well, some big money that's going to go a long way. Today, Children's Hospital of Georgia got a $400,000 grant from Hyundai to help young cancer patients. There you see the check presentation. And doctors tell us that money is going to help with pediatric immunotherapy. One patient we talked to says that therapy makes her feel like any other child. It's just taking pills. So it doesn't hurt my body as much. I am still able to do things, like I'm doing Jarvis training right now, which is a big step in my life. And I'm starting high school here in a couple of weeks. And it just means so much for people to love and support this section. And it means everything to me. And great job, Harper. You feel well soon. Since 2011, Hyundai Hope on Wheels has awarded more than $900,000 in grant money to support pediatric immunotherapy at CHOG. Coming up, allegations of misconduct in the U.S. Coast Guard. We're going to take you inside a Senate hearing addressing those issues next. And it's still a very first alert day in the 
deal with ongoing flooding with more flooding possible tonight. An additional one to four inches of rain with some of these thunderstorms on top of damaging wind gusts not out of the question. But then finally, lower chances of rain tomorrow with the heat and humidity on the way. Details coming up. From the time I was a little girl, the only thing I ever dreamed about was forecasting the weather. This is Jennifer's Red Sea Live. I see a pink flea every inch tree down, and so do not drive. I mean, I remember watching weather forecasts on TV while my friends were watching cartoons. I guess I was a bit of a nerd. When I grow up, my ambition is to become a successful meteorologist. So for me, being chief meteorologist here at News Channel 6, it's a dream come true. Again, I'm Art Express. Busy week continues for Chief Meteorologist Jennifer Trotter. I'll say welcome, this. <laughs> welcome to your new job, right? Bradley? Yeah, welcome to your new job. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Ten left at the perfect time. Yep. But, um, but what a glorious sight to see the sun shining in Newington oh, yeah. with yes, Korea. Yeah. Yes, I totally agree. They have gotten so much rain, and we are hoping it, that there is no more rain the rest of this evening. But of course, there are some scattered showers on Live Viper 6, and it's possible that some of that rain can move into
By 3 a.m. Friday morning, still possible that we'll be seeing some rain in Allendale. But by the time you're waking up and headed out the door, things look much better. We'll finally see some sun coming out and it will be overall a much drier day. But in the meantime, it's possible that we can have an additional one to three, maybe even four inches of rain in isolated pockets the rest of tonight. And then on Friday, we have a cold front coming through. That's what's responsible for finally moving Debbie out of here, but it's also going to be responsible for bringing us a few more storms on Friday. Unfortunately, looks like it would be in our southeastern counties again. And then as we go into Saturday and Sunday, it will stall out over us, so not a complete washout, but a few more storms possible each day, bringing some heavy downpours. A hot and humid day tomorrow as well, back into those low to mid 90s. And for your 10-day forecast, we will still see some upper 80s next week, though. And the chances of rain will be around 30 to 40 percent, so no high chances. And congratulations now to today's Viper 6 Umbrella winner. That is Rodney Oglesby from Millen, Georgia. You can pick up your Viper 6 Umbrella here at the station and sign up to win yours on WJBF.com. And we'll be right back. The most significant law... This is a WJBF Live Viper 6 Alert. Welcome back. Let's start out by looking at those rainfall totals from Debbie. Now, this does say the five-day rainfall totals, but keep in mind, a lot of this rain came down over a very short period of time, around 24 hours for some of our southern line counties. And notice anywhere from around 7 to 14 inches of rain. That's what happened down in southern Scrubbing County, 13.7 and 13.9 as our radar estimate here in parts of Newington and Oliver. All of our southern counties covered with the 7 to 10 inches, 10.6 around Bamberg, and then even up into Aiken County, the southern part around Windsor, Wagner, seven inches, and then three inches anywhere from Saluda, Edgefield, into Richmond County, around five, and Emanuel, and Johnson, and more rain happening now. We certainly do not need any more. This has taken care of the drought we've been in, for sure. Live Viper 6 showing those scattered showers and storms, primarily anywhere from Hancock County down to Burke, but we also have more activity out towards the southeast. Let's start out with that shower, though, in San Andersville at Sparta, some lightning here as well, 25 strikes over the last 15 minutes. Then as we go over towards the metro, we have an aerial flood advisory until 8.15, but fortunately not seeing any rain within this polygon, maybe dropped earlier. We do have one shower over Waynesboro with a lightning strike, and then more rain in Barnwell, Bamberg, and Allendale, along with some thunder and lightning. Unfortunately, some heavy rain coming down in Allendale at the moment. Scriven County, not too bad just yet. We do have that shower along Highway 301 to the east of Hiltonia and also Jenkins County outside of Millen also a spotty shower. So we have the aerial flood warnings going until 9 o'clock tonight. Could be extended further as we will have more rain even until the overnight hours for Jenkins, Screven, and Allendale counties. Temperatures are anywhere from the upper 70s to low 90s. So we have a very big spread here. Cooler in places with the rain. Warmer down towards the southwest. Very breezy down there as well in Emanuel County. Our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam showing that in Swainsboro. 80 degrees, 84 as your feels like temperature, a very humid day. And as for Debbie's latest status, it is moving at 10 miles per hour, thank goodness. So it's finally picking up some forward speed. Winds are sustained at 35 miles per hour with the center of the storm right around Charlotte. So we are dealing with the last of the outer rain bands from Debbie. And you can see it is going to move very quickly all the way up towards the northeast, eventually into Canada, still keeping that 35 mile per hour strength. So still causing some issues up there as well over the next few days. For us, this is our last Viper 6 alert day. We have a slight risk of excessive rainfall anywhere from Saluda County down to Screven and a marginal risk for the rest of us. And you can see here on our future cast tonight at 7 o'clock, that's when some rain will start to become more widespread and push down into our southern counties. I do think this model is a little bit overdone with the coverage, but nonetheless, know that there is the possibility of rain and thunderstorms pretty much all night long, and then light shower activity for our northern counties around 11 o'clock. But it's definitely anywhere from Jenkins over to Bamberg where we have the biggest concern with any additional rainfall. Even a quarter of an inch is not going to be helpful with the flooding down there. By 3 a.m. Friday morning, still possible that we'll be seeing some rain in Allendale, but by the time you're waking up and headed out the door, things look much better. We'll finally see some sun coming out, and it will be overall a much drier day. But in the meantime, it's possible that we could have an additional one to three, maybe even four inches of rain in isolated pockets the rest of tonight. And then on Friday, we have a cold front coming through. That's what's responsible for finally.
finally moving Debbie out of here, but it's also going to be responsible for bringing us a few more storms on Friday. Unfortunately, it looks like it would be in our southeastern counties again. And then as we go into Saturday and Sunday, it will stall out over us, so not a complete washout, but a few more storms possible each day, bringing some heavy downpours. A hot and humid day tomorrow as well, back into those low to mid 90s. And for your 10 day forecast, we will still see some upper 80s next week, though. And the chances of rain will be around 30 to 40 percent, so no high chances. And congratulations now to today's Viper 6 Umbrella winner. That is Rodney Oglesby from Millen, Georgia. You can pick up your Viper 6 Umbrella here at the station and sign up to win yours on WJBF.com. And we'll be right back. The most significant loss. People revisiting an old nature documentary may have found Bigfoot, they say, in the background what? of a shot. Yeah, it was 2001. The movie was Great North, and it's about a cruise journey in northern Canada exploring near the Arctic Circle. You can spot a dark figure there in the background. The movie's director said there were no strangers within hundreds of miles of the shoot. So it has to be Sasquatch. Uh -oh. oh, has to be, yeah. Look at the animals <laughs> running in fear. That's like the ghost in Three Men and a Baby. When you see it, the, the, looking back at it, they see a figure like yeah. in the Are the Loch Ness or Monster's um, yeah. head or arm? Yeah. Jenna? yeah a little creepy. <laughs> a little spooky. Well, our forecast is looking much better tomorrow, but we still have a few more storms around. All right, thanks, Jenna. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate it.